Good morning and welcome back to the Johnson Space Center for the first of two mission status briefings today. This one will focus on the return of the Expedition 27 crew in their Soyuz vehicle landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. With us uh, to discuss all of the night's activities that led up uh, to that activity is Dana Weigel, the International Space Station Orbit One Flight Director. Dana. Thanks, Rob. Overall, the mission is going very well. The, both crews are in great spirits and uh, have been doing a fantastic job. As Rob said, the main activity on the station side today was departure of the 25S crew with D Dmitry Kondratiev, Paolo Nespoli, and Katie Coleman. The station crew woke around 5 a.m. Houston time and they did all of their standard Soyuz preparations, which include items like last minute transfers to the vehicle, um, donning their Sokol suits, doing leak checks in both the suit and in the vehicle. The uh, hatch closure to the vehicle was at 1.30 p.m. Houston time. And then the undocking actually took place at 4.35 p.m. Houston time. As you heard the other day, this wasn't just a normal undocking. We also did some photography along with it. So shortly after the undock, Dimitri took manual control of the vehicle. He flew backwards about 200 meters and went to a station keeping point that was basically aft and above ISS slightly. Uh, from that point, Paulo ingressed the habitation module. He had a couple still cameras and a video camera, and he began taking imagery of the space station. We maneuvered the vehicle to a special photo keeping, uh, photo taking attitude. It took about 15 minutes to get there, so he was taking imagery as we were transitioning to that attitude. Once we got there, he took a few more uh, snapshots. They did a separation burn. Uh, he took a few more pictures as they were separating. Uh, shortly after that, ISS went back to its normal mated TEA, and then the Soyuz crew got back into their suits, closed the hatch, redid both leak checks. Uh, everything worked out well there. And then at about 8.37 p.m., there was a deorbit burn that set them up for their landing at 9.26. And you probably saw the video about 20 minutes later. We had a lot of smiling faces as they were pulling the crew out of their capsule uh, and as they were sitting there in their chairs being greeted. I've got an animation or a uh, couple video shots from tonight, if you could roll that. Let's see, this shows the initial separation. This is the view we had from one of our external cameras on the space station. The initial separation is actually created by a spring force on the vehicle. Now you're looking at the view that the commander had. This is Dimitri's view. This is a, a TV camera that we also get sent over to the space station. This is at the uh, photo taking position. Uh, this is a shot of landing. We had some fantastic footage. The shoots come out about 14 minutes before landing. Then you see firing of uh, some thrusters that help soften the landing, and then the vehicle lands on the ground. Um, as we were preparing for uh, the activities uh, earlier this evening, we did have a, a problem on board with one of our uh, power boxes. There's a, a circuit breaker, which is called a remote power controller. It tripped and we lost power to some equipment that gives us the view that you saw in that, that middle image. Um, that's digital imagery that typically comes over from the Russian segment to the US segment. So we had Ron on board redo some cabling so that we could still recover that imagery. Uh, it turns out that equipment's also used for getting files up and down to the vehicle and a couple other things. So this morning when the shuttle crew got up, we had them uh, replace that box for us. The rest of the shuttle crew's days really spent preparing for EVA-3. Um, right now, the, uh, the station crew is in hel on helicopters going to Karaganda for their typical welcome ceremony. Shortly after that, Paulo and Katie will get on a NASA uh, plane and head back to Houston. And then, of course, Dimitri will go back to Star City. That's all I have for the, the Soyuz stuff. Obviously, we're looking forward to EVA-3 tomorrow. Major things we have there are testing of a new pre-breathe protocol. It's called the In-Suit Light Exercise or Aisle Protocol. Um, major activities we're doing during the EVA include installing a grapple fixture on the, the uh, Russian segment that will allow us to put our robotic arm on the Russian segment. We're also routing some power cables from the U.S. segment over to the FGB. We're completing one of the tasks we didn't complete on EVA-1. That's to do some uh, wireless communication system cabling. And then we're also doing imagery of one of the payloads. Okay, thanks, Dana. We'll take uh, questions here in Houston, go to the phone bridge, and we'll start with Robert Perlman. 
Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, with regards to the, the circuit breaker box um, that, or the power box that went down, uh, I think I saw a tweet from um, the AMS team saying that it caused them some problems. Can you just elaborate what type of problems AMS had because of that? Sure. The box, um, so, so the problem was in a power box. Uh, what it unpowered is a box that's responsible for routing payload telemetry from the vehicle down to the ground. That box also routes some of the video, which we talked about, the digital video, and then it also allows us to send files up and down. So all of the video, or all of the uh, payload data goes through that box. So AMS and all of the other payloads on board were affected. And um, can, uh, did you get confirmation, as trivial as it may sound, that the, uh, the camera cards with the pictures from the, from the photo op uh, were handed off successfully? and? that they are on their way back to Moscow or to wherever they're going to be transmitted back to us so we get to see them? We actually haven't talked to anybody about that yet, so we haven't gotten any word. Uh, we know we're having discussions with our Russian colleagues to get them back as quickly as possible, but with the focus on all of the undock activities, I just haven't gotten a status on that. Philip. Philip Sloss with nasaspaceflight.com. Um, did you get an updated um, uh, check up on the crew after they went into the medical tent in terms of um, just a report on how they're, how they're they, look, they looked like they were doing really well, but did yeah. you get any updated report on them? All reports were that the crew was doing great. Um, they were in good spirits. They were healthy. And then I just had a question um, because of the RPC trips. Uh, it, it sounded like Ron Guerin's day got sort of extended quite heavily. And I know that uh, I think I heard Dan Tani talking about in fact, I heard some of the space to ground that, you know, he didn't sound like he was going to be particularly useful today. Uh, how are you, how is that being, re, his day being replanned for today? So he was up pretty late. Uh, he was up doing a lot of different odds and ends. And one of the last things we had him do was reroute this cabling for us so that we could recover some of this video. Uh, fortunately, the way his day was laid out today, he's got one major uh, maintenance activity that he's helping with on board, but we were able to reorder and shuffle some of his activities to later in the day and then also to future days. So he got to sleep in an extra three hours. So we tried to compensate for the time that he was up. Okay, we have three reporters on the phone bridge, starting off with Denise Chow from space.com. Hi, um, just to follow up on the power box issue, I was wondering if there was any loss of data from um, the payloads that were affected. They did lose data during the time period that the box was down. Uh, I don't have my notes, but I'd say it was maybe five or six hours, maybe a few more than that. So during that time period, uh, some, some payloads have the capability to record data on laptops and other media, but a lot of them really rely on it coming down to the ground. So there was an outage of, of payload data. Uh, when I was leaving console, we had just replaced the box and we were repowering it back up. So it was looking like everything was working fine when I was leaving. And then if I can also just ask a follow-up about um, the Soyuz and the vertical landing. Um, I was wondering if that's uh, easier or more challenging for recovery teams to extract the crew and, and why that is. I can't really speak to the ease for the recovery crew. For the crew that's inside, it's much easier. Um, they certainly prefer when they have a vertical landing, it's easier on them. I really can't say if it's easier for the uh, ground teams getting them out one position or another. Okay, next up is Seth Borenstein from the Associated Press. Hey, thanks for doing this. Speaking of Ron Guerin's uh, uh, sleep schedule, I know the per permission was given to the Endeavor crew to wake up early to watch this, and yet maybe I wasn't listening right, but I didn't hear anything about them being awake or seeing this. Do you know if uh, they, they watched the, uh, the photo opportunity, and uh, did you get any feedback from them on that? I don't know if the shuttle crew did, but Ron made a call um, shortly after the undock that, that let us know that he was still awake. So I know he was watching, and I'm not sure about the shuttle crew. And in terms, just one last one for me, uh, obviously you don't have the pictures yet, but do you consider the whole maneuver a success? Obviously, you know, it's never going to be done again. But... Uh, do, I mean, is it, was, do you consider this a, a, a successful uh, opportunity there? Absolutely. Um, 
It was fantastic to watch it. It was pretty amazing. Dimitri's piloting skills were spot on. You know, the plan that was laid out was very specific. At, at this three minute point, we do a burn to separate at this point. The crew ingresses the habitation module. And it was like watching something that we had done multiple times or that we had trained on the ground. So from a, a smoothness of execution, I couldn't have been happier. Um, we saw the crew's perspective. So we got to look back and see what space station and, and the shuttle, the mated stack look like together. And I think we're going to get a lot of fantastic images from it. Okay, and uh, last on the docket, Bill Harwood from CBS. Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, Dana, with, every, with the progress you guys have been making, uh, have you identified anything that you would like to have an extra day for? Uh, I could you got the cryo for it, uh, but I don't know if there's anything you could really do or, or not. We don't have any specific large drivers. Of course, it's something we always talk about, so we're always looking at you know, if we had the margin, if we were going to add a day, what, what would the trades be? What could we add in? So, of course, we've had some of those discussions just looking at it, but there's no really large piece that drives it. It would really be a collection of items you could pull up to save time from the, the stage, just to use the extra hands that you have on board, especially now since we're down to a smaller station crew. OK, I think that's Thank it. You. I think that's it from Bill. Any uh, follow-ups back here? Seeing none, uh, we'll just close with a couple of programming notes. Uh, members of the media from Pittsburgh and Houston markets uh, will have an opportunity to talk to the crew again uh, in a series of interviews at 5.43 a.m. Central Time this morning. The second of our mission status briefings comes up at 8.30 a.m. Central Time uh, with Derek Hossman and company to preview EVA3 in particular and review the night's activities. And at 11 a.m. Central Time this morning, noon Eastern Time, a special video file with all of the post-landing footage for the Expedition 27 crew's welcoming ceremony in Karaganda, and what we hope will be brief interviews with Katie Coleman and Paolo Nespoli, 11 a.m. Central Time on NASA TV. You can follow all the activities on shuttle and station on our website at www.nasa.gov. Thanks very much. Now back to mission coverage. <laughs>